The topic for my presentation is endovascular intervention in the management of visceral or tricidal aneurysms. Visceral or tricidal aneurysms are defined as aneurysms affecting the celiac superior or inferior mesenteric arteries and their branches. Visceral or tricidal aneurysms are uncommon and are attributed to degeneration of the vessel wall, mostly due to infections, adjacent inflammation, trauma, and heterogenic causes. The increasing use of cross sectional abdominal imaging has led to a higher detection rate of visceral aneurysms. In the recent years, still visceral or tricidal aneurysms are considered to be underdiagnosed, and patients often present to the hospital only when complications occur. The most common complication of visceral or tricidal aneurysm is rupture and hemorrhage with potentially devastating consequences for the patient in terms of morbidity and mortality. Recent studies report a rupture rate of 76% with a high mortality rate of up to 21%. Etiology Pseudoaneurysms develop when the elastic fibers and smooth muscle fibers of tunica media of the artery are torn, frequently with intima interruption. Its causes include inflammatory conditions like pancreatitis and cholecystitis, infections such as abscesses, vasculitis, trauma such as penetrating injuries and heterogenic trauma, collagen vascular diseases, segmental arterial medullosis, and cancer. In our institute, the commonest causes are hepatobiliary and pancreatic duodenal surgeries and interventional procedures like percutaneous transhepatic biliary drainage and liver biopsies. Imaging The most frequently used non-invasive imaging methods for identifying, identifying and assessing pseudoaneurysms are ultrasonography, computer tomography, and magnetic resonance imaging. Multi-detector CT angiography is the most commonly used and most sensitive non-invasive modalities for detection of pseudoaneurysms. The gold standard for diagnosis continues to be digital subtraction angiography. Two main indications of DSA in the setting of pseudoaneurysms are number one, possible embolization of a pseudoaneurysm detected on imaging, number two, detection of pseudoaneurysm under high clinical suspicion with normal findings on UAG CT and MRI. Aim is to study the efficacy of endovascular intervention in the management of visceral artery pseudoaneurysms. This was a combined retrospective prospective study and a total of 46 diagnosed cases of visceral artery pseudoaneurysms from 2015 to 2022 were dealt as per our inclusion and exclusion criteria. Diagnosed cases of pseudoaneurysms underwent CT angiography imaging prior to endovascular management for mapping of arterial anatomy and feasibility of the management. The technique The visceral vessel was catheterized using a femoral approach. A six French vascular sheath was placed in the desired vessel using Seldinger technique and a four or five French catheter was inserted into the visceral vessel. Super selection of the target vascular lesion was achieved using micro catheters. The vascular lesion was then embolized using different embolic agents as deemed suitable by the operator. Inclusion criteria include all those patients diagnosed with visceral artery pseudoaneurysms on any of the imaging modalities such as ultrasound CT, MRI, DSA, in Department of Radio Diagnosis Sora from 2015 to 2022. Exclusion criteria include patients allergic to contrast agents, patients with uncorrected coagulopathy, patients with true aneurysms, and pregnant women. A 20-year-old man presented with blunt trauma, excellent, excellent coronal MPR reconstruction image demonstrated splenic artery pseudoaneurysm rounded by coarse hematoma. Digital subtraction angiography of splenic artery demonstrated pseudoaneurysm in the presence of multiple wall irregularities such as blabs, a warning sign of impending breakout. Post-embolization angiographic control with complete embolization of splenic artery is shown in image D. There are also the requirements due to another adrenal hemorrhage successfully treated in the same session. A 45-year-old woman presented with massive hematemesis after gastroenteric anastomosis due to ingestion of caustics. Coronal and actual MPI reconstruction image demonstrate a sparse splenic artery with pseudoaneurysm formation directly bleeding into the stomach. Digital subtraction angiography image shows splenic artery rupture splenic artery aneurysm rupture with massive bleeding in the stomach. Post-embolization angiographic image control show complete occlusion of splenic artery obtained with 1 to 1 mixture of glue lipidol. A 55-year-old man presented to our emergency department for acute abdominal pain. Action mepary reconstruction image demonstrate celiac artery dissection with multiple bleeding or pebs of the splenic artery suggest of systemic arterial medialis. Digital subtraction angiography image show that multiple bleeding and webs of the splenic artery vessel wall. Post embolization angiographic control after proximal embolization demonstrate distal recanalization of the splenic artery by estrodrenal artery. A 60 year old man with all of necrosis after necrotizing pancreatitis. Excellent sagittal MPI reconstruction image demonstrates splenic artery pseudoaneurysm in direct connection with wall of necrosis, previously treated surgically. Angiography image shows splenic artery pseudoaneurysm in image C. Final angiographic control. After coil embolization, demonstrates splenic artery recanalization, distal to coil embolization by magna pancreatic artery. A 33 year old male with confirmed chronic pancreatitis presenting with high grade fever and hematemesis. Trans abdominal ultrasonographic image of the right hepatic artery pseudoaneurysm show well defined anechoic lesion on gray scale image with characteristic yin yang sign on color Doppler. Cholangitic abscess were seen adjacent to the pseudoaneurysm. 
results. Majority of our patients were treated with endovascular management, that is 78.3%, 10.9% received surgical treatment, and 10.9% patients were treated with conservative management. Majority of the patients presented with GI bleed, that is 28.3%, followed by hemorrhagic drain output, seen in 23.9% of patients. 27.7% presented with hemoperitoneum, that is they were false positive patients. 13% presented with abdominal pain, 10.9% were asymptomatic, and 2.2% had abdominal distension. We observed that most of the patients had hepatic artery involvement, that is in 37% of the cases, followed by spleen artery involvement seen in 26.1% of the cases. 21.7% presented with involvement of the gastrointestinal artery. Most patients had atrogenic trauma as etiology, seen in 30.4% of the cases, followed by blunt trauma seen in 26.1% of the cases. 17.4% cases had chronic pancreatitis, 13% had malignant etiology, 6.4% had acute pancreatitis, and 6.5% had infectious etiology. In majority of our patients, coiling embolic material was used, that is in 47.2% of the patients, followed by coil and gel foam seen in used in 41.7%, in 8.3% and 2.8% of the patient, gel foam and thrombin was used respectively. Success rate for endovascular management was 97.2%. 5.6% of the patient experienced the liver abscess and 8.3% experienced as an organ infarct as a complication following endovascular management. One patient died out of the 36 patients managed endovascular therapy of the five patient managed surgically three patients died and out of the five patient managed conservatively two patients died the most common cause of visceral artery pseudoembolism in our study was atrogenic trauma followed by blunt trauma most common cause after trauma was chronic pancreatitis we observed that majority of our patients presented with acute gi bleed followed by hemorrhagic drain output and hemoperitoneum majority of our patients were treated with endovascular management followed by surgical treatment and conservative management in the rest of the patients. We observed that one patient died out of the 36 patient managed endovascular therapy. Of the five patients managed surgically, three patients died. And out of the five patients managed conservatively, two patients died. These are my references. Thank you.